Hey guys, welcome back to the house where we talk new celebrities and hot topics. Uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta season 14, a recap. Last night's episode was a whole hot mess. It was a whole key and it was really, really good. If you missed it, you missed out on a great one. This is one of the very few episodes where I feel like it was very entertaining from start to finish. So I do recommend everybody go to the apps and check it out. Now in this recap, I'm gonna try to be quick and concise because it is a lot to go over. It was a whole bunch of mess in this episode. Starting off with Sheree and Son going ahead to Drew's home to check up on her after her ruptured Achilles Hill surgery. I thought it was really nice of Sheree and Sonia seeming as though Sheree and Sonia are Drew's ops. Okay, Drew does not like Sheree nor Sonia. So she might want to reevaluate her friendship group because where was Marlo? Where was Kenya? Where was Candy? We're just a little bit confused at that situation. So like I said, I thought it was nice of Sheree and Sonia to show up. But I think the real reason why Sheree decided to visit Drew's house was to drop off the bone about Kenya talking mess about Ann Ross. OK, remember they were in Jamaica and it was a tag team situation between Sheree and Kenya about being uninvited to the iFit thing when they weren't uninvited. They were just trying to make a, a mountain out of a molehill, child. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Anyways, they wanted to create this whole debacle about the iFit commercial. And Aaron Ross was like, y'all not going to gang up on my wife, especially after Kenny Moore was like, I can talk whenever I want to. OK, uh, Miss Thing. So Aaron Ross stood up and was like, you're not going to F with my wife. Period. Point blank. OK, bottom line. OK, what's the point of having a husband if you're not going to stand up for your ass? I don't want him if you don't. So listen, um, Kenny, I guess, felt offended at the situation. The next day in Jamaica, they went and did the little boats thing. And she told Sheree, like, she was so scared. Aaron Ross was so scary. And he was this and he was that. And he was the third and he was aggressive. Oh, my God. A man stood up and told me not to mess with his wife child cry me a red ver okay justin timberlake um so moving right along sheree told sonya that kenya was calling ross aggressive sonya did not take kindly to that news and so on the spot and i knew in this moment that this phone call was very authentic it was spontaneous it was off the cuff I could tell that that was a real moment, that Sonia was really upset in that moment and she needed to call Kenya right then and there because I do believe that a lot of these phone calls on these damn reality TV shows are fake or set up, right? The producers go, you're going to have a phone call with Candy, okay? Remember Candy and uh, Marlo were having that phone call about donating the clothes and stuff like that? Like, yeah, they set that up because... How is it that Marlo has cameras at her house just at the right time that Candy has cameras at her house filming the same scene? Like it's a simultaneous scene. It's set up to be done like that on purpose. So a lot of these phone calls are, you know, schemes set up by production. But I do believe this phone call between Sonia and Kenya was an authentic moment. Sonia was really upset. OK, Sonia was upset. Because she's like, oh, my God, like this woman is going around calling my husband aggressive, like calling a black man aggressive when he was simply just standing up for his wife, I don't think is acceptable. Listen, y'all can have y'all's opinions about that, uh, whether you agree or disagree, comment it down below. Now, um, she calls Kenya and Kenya acting like she waking up from a nap or something like that. Granted, I do believe it's like eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. Um, so I guess Kenya was in a slumber or she was taking a nap or something to that effect. And she goes, hello, hello, who was this? Is everything okay? And Sonia's like, yeah, so I'm sitting here with Sheree and she's telling me, um, that you caught Ross aggressive. I don't appreciate that. And so Kenny is acting like, what? Like, what are you talking about? I don't recall using that word. Like, did I do that? Did I say that? Yes, honey, you did do and say that. And so there really was no real resolve to the situation. And all I remember was Kenya hanging up and Sonia going, bye, bitch. And I was like, oh, not you calling Miss USA 1990, 93, 1990, 90. <laughs> not you calling Miss USA 93 a bitch. Okay, a B-I-T-C-H. That's not nice. But I mean, listen, I'm not going to co-sign Sonia calling this woman a B-I-T-C-H. However... I'm not going to criticize Sonia about calling her a B-I-T-C-H either, especially when we get this next scene with the casting call. Now, Sheree does a casting call for She by Sheree because, you know, the fashion show was in nine days or, you know, whatever. 
And, you know, this casting call was on the DL. She hires this woman, Rowan Sheree does, to coordinate and direct the fashion show and whatnot. And she tells Rowan um, before Kenya gets there, she goes, okay, I invited my girlfriend, uh, Rowan, and this woman is a shady character, so just beware, okay? And Rowan was like, I got this, boo. I'm auditioning for the peach, okay? Listen. Um, so Kenya gets there, and she walks in, and she's like, oh, my God, like, why didn't you tell me to post the casting call on my Instagram? Like, this place would have been wrapped around the building, okay? The line would have been wrapped around the building. And Rowan was like, I mean, out of respect for Sheree, we wanted to keep it on the down low. And then Kenya was like, uh, ain't no down low. How is we keeping it on the down low and you expect people to show up? Like, that doesn't really make sense, okay? So Kenya is coming in hot, okay? And at this point, I'm laying up in my bed, I'm watching the TV show, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm stressed out, okay? I feel like Sheree in this moment. I'm stressed out. I don't know what the hell is going on. The samples are stuck in Alaska. The samples in L.A. aren't finished, the model call hasn't even started yet. I'm, you know, sitting pretty in my Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> Rowan is sitting pretty with her Gucci headscarf and the damn Prada jacket. And Kenya Moore just comes waltzing in, looking great, but feeling stressed. Putting in more stress into a very stressful situation. Okay? Kenya goes, why didn't you tell me to post, uh, you know, on my Instagram? We need models. You need real models. You need this. You need this, that, and the third. And it's like she doesn't understand how Sheree is just keeping it cool, calm, and collected when the fashion show is in nine days. And here's my whole thing. I feel like I love how Kenya is invested in Sheree's success. I love how Kenya is invested in seeing Sheree put on this fashion show and it be a success and it not be like how it was in season one and in season two, okay? I love the fact that I do feel like it's coming from a genuine place. At the same time, you already know that Sheree is spending a lot of money. You already know that Sheree is under a lot of pressure and a lot of uh, stress. So how about you send her some encouraging words? How about you send her some suggestions and recommendations in a more softer tone right because I feel like Kenya is coming from this tough love place which I think is fine uh sometimes but I feel like in this instance it's a little bit too perpetual it's kind of like okay I'm already stressed and girl you're stressing me out even more all right so anyways um she you know come waltzing in and complains and is doing the extraness and stuff like that and you know then she goes why are we sitting the wrong way and Rowan is like, I mean, this is how I do my fashion shows. And Kenya's like, uh, oh, so you do them the wrong way. Ooh. Mm. Okay, coming in hot, sis, coming in hot. And then uh, Rowan goes, okay, I'm going to charge it to the game. She told me you were shady as hell. So listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the chairs around so we can appease Miss uh, 1993. All right. Um, and then Kenya goes, Sheree, you need to find some real models. Like, where are the real models? When I walked in here... There were no real models. Everybody was, thick, uh, what you might call it, five, six, and shorter. Then Rowan overhears, and I guess Rowan is sick of all the negative, stressful energy. And she goes, well, if you want real models, you need a real budget. Was that shade, Phaedra? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> was that shade? Uh, Rowan, I like you. Okay, you can play with the big girls. Okay, you 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 can hang with the big girls. Rowan said, if you want real models, you need a real budget. And even though uh, you know, even though she uh threw her client under the bus, Sheree, you deserved that whole big old shade tree. Okay, that damn palm tree. Because you sat up here inviting this woman knowing that she was gonna call out coochie crack. <laughs> This scene definitely was giving vintage Roa. It was definitely giving season five coochie crack. It was definitely giving, uh, what was it? Season two, the premiere episode. You better watch it before you get checked. Who gonna check me, boo? It was definitely giving like season one, Lindsay Lohan daddy. 
okay, you need to watch out, Lindsay Lohan Daddy, you ain't got nothing to do with this. It was so authentically Roa, and I absolutely loved it. And even though Kenya Moore hair care was working on my nerves and she was being so rude and so nasty and so mean, it was so vintage Roa, and I absolutely loved it. Where random bystanders just get caught up in the shade of it all. Beautiful, beautiful television. Anyways, so um, she says, yeah, in order for real models, you need a real budget. And so that's when Sheree gets really nervous and her palms are sweating. And she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. What do you mean a real budget? What's the real budget, Rowan? And it's like, you've had this woman planning out this fashion show. I've no, I know you've had her for months. And you are just now asking the question what a real budget for a real model is going to be. It's giving weird. It's giving either... Sheree is very unprepared and very unknowledgeable about this or this is all being played up. Her unpreparedness is being played up in order to really impress us for finale night. Anyways, so she goes, we can get models from, you know, anywhere between 250 and 500 from, you know, real models, real Atlanta agencies and things like that. And Kenny is like, bet, we're going to pay it. And Sheree's like, well, hold up now. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I already have to pay $13.50 for this damn uh, birthday party that I'm throwing you. Okay, this is, in the, <laughs> this is in the back of Sheree's head. And then she goes, um, I've already spent a million dollars on samples. You've spent a million dollars on what? You've spent a million dollars on who? On samples? No, you haven't, girl. Okay, maybe she was over-exaggerating. But a million dollars, maybe she was accumulating and calculating all of the expenses from 2008, 2009, maybe. Who knows? But she goes, yeah, I can't afford it. I've already spent a million dollars. Basically, in a nutshell, that's what she says. So it's like, okay, whatever, Sheree. You can't even take her seriously. You don't know if she's telling the truth or if she's lying. Then we finally get the models out. They go walking, walking, walking. A lot of them are short. You no, know, Tino Shade to, uh, you know, the short folks out there. But, you know, st industry standard is, you know, usually models are tall. Now, I feel like for this particular fashion show, Sheree really doesn't need real models. This is not like a high fashion line. Because remember, now, if you really, really are a, a Real Housewives of Atlanta fan, then you would know that I think, if I'm not mistaken, real fans stand up and fact check me. During Sheree's off season, I think when she got off the show, I don't think it was on the show. She actually did have a She by Sheree fashion show. And if you Google the pictures, it looked really, really cute. But um, it wasn't joggers. It wasn't workout gear. It wasn't Nike, Adidas, uh, Under Armour. Like it, it wasn't giving that. It was giving like business casual cocktail wear, cocktail hour, right? Um, it was giving Macy's, Nordstrom, Dillard, Saks, Neiman. It was giving like that department store sort of fashion. So, um, she did have a fashion show, um, back then with totally different clothes. And I feel like that was the sort of environment or the sort of situation where you would want to hire real models because you're actually showing like designer pieces for joggers to me this is nothing but like ivy park or something that nike you know a nike or an adidas campaign and they use they do use real models but a lot of those people be influencers and a lot of those people be of all sorts of heights and sizes and weights and looks and colors and things like that and so i feel like for this particular fashion line does she need the super skinty, super tall model? No. Does she necessarily need a, a professional model? I don't really think so. Because I feel like it's nothing but bralettes, joggers, and yoga mats, girl. Like, get you some people that have confident walks. Get you some nice-looking, good people who have confident walks to, who are going to wear the clothes and make it look flattering. And then that's just it. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I went off on a whole tangent. Um, so they finally get the models out and whatnot. One of the girls has her comp card, but it doesn't have her contact information on there. And so Kenya goes, baby girl, I'm going to need you to put your contact information on the comp card, comp card, meaning like a headshot or something. And then Rowan, the director, coordinator lady goes, um, you know, girl, like my assistant already has the contact information. We don't need to do that. And Kenya goes, well, this is how you do it. This is the right way to go about it. 
And then Rowan goes, I mean, fine. Okay, do it. Just anything for you to feel better, for you to sleep better at night, sis. Kenny goes, yeah, I do feel better. Rowan goes, well, I'm happy for you. Kenny goes, I'm very happy. Then Rowan goes, yay, confetti. Listen. Season 15, we need Portia. We need Simon. We need Tanya back. We need Shamari back. <laughs> Eva can be a friend of, and Rowan definitely deserves a peach. Okay, turn her great back into a peach. Rowan for the kill. All in all, even though I thought the scene was beautifully done, it was it was comedy gold, I do feel like from a real life perspective, Kenya was extra, extra, extra mean and she made an already stressful situation even more stressful. So, you know, that's Kenya for you. I was really riding for Kenya for like the first 10 episodes and then like the last five, it's just like, uh, now I remember why I'm not the biggest fan of Kenya Moore Hericker. Mm. Anyways, Moving right along. So I'm trying to hurry this up because my laptop is definitely dying. Um, ooh, ciao. Okay. Um, Drew still wants Ralph to adopt Josiah. Honestly, I just don't understand it. You don't need to adopt a child in order to claim them on the taxes. You don't need to adopt a child in order to treat them like your biological child. I guess for the symbolism of it all, you know, if you want the child to be legally yours, okay, then fine. However, if he's already growing up in the house with the father, you know, and he's being treated the same as if he is the biological son of this man, why does it matter? I just don't get it. You know what it's giving me? And this is no Tino Shade. And maybe I'm ignorant because I've never been, you know, I've never been a parent and then gotten married to somebody else, you know, and had a child from a different relationship. I've never gone through that. But what it's screaming and what it's giving is if I break up with this man, if me and Ralph get a divorce, I want him to pay child support for each and every one of these kiddos. No tea, no shade. Moving right along. Uh, speaking of the kids, the nephews are back. That's all great and dandy. Moving right along. Um, mm, okay. And I'm going to have to kind of like woos off of this one. We have Kenya and Marlo's birthdays coming up. So Drew comes up with the smart idea, the bright idea to throw a joint birthday party for these two. And she summons in Sheree to help her uh, plan it. So this is a joint effort between Drew and Sheree. And I'm trying not to go into detail because we already talked about the whole 1350 okay? The thousand, the $1,300 bill that Sheree refuses to pay for or doesn't want to pay for. But... um. I'm, I'm, I'm about to build my case, and I think I'm going to win my case, okay? Just give me a second. The first thing is, why is Drew throwing anything with a ruptured Achilles heel or whatever the fuck is going on with her ankle and her toes that I have seen more times than I would have liked, okay? Why are you planning parties with a ruptured Achilles whatever it's called, okay? No tea, no shade, no none of that. It just doesn't make sense. Let candy do that or you know i don't know let's well sonia did the last birthday party i just kind of felt like why did drew have to do it sheree should have done it by herself really because she's the only one that has it. so that's the first thing that i didn't understand and y'all already know my sentiments i feel like drew created this whole scene in order to embarrass sheree to make it seem like see me and my assistant were right sheree doesn't pay her bills and we know sheree doesn't pay her bills we don't need drew sedora to make a point out of it but i feel like the whole point of this party was not only to celebrate yes the women um but to embarrass sheree and make a point about the whole assistant thing to reignite this beef to i don't know get some cool points for the tv screen because we do know drew sedora is an actress now you didn't have to plan the party in the first place, especially when you have a broken leg. That's number one. Number two, out of all the women to summon to go in half on a birthday party, you chose Sheree. Now, you already had this knowledge and information that Sheree doesn't pay her bills per your own assistant that you refuse to fire. So if that's the case, if I had knowledge that one of my friends didn't like to pay bills, why would I willingly throw a birthday party with that said friend? Okay, so that's number, that's number whatever number it is. Number two, that's the second point. The third point is, notice how Drew Sedora made it a point to bring up the invoice 
twice on camera. She brought it up once in a FaceTime call when they went back to a flashback. And then she brought it up again when Sheree actually showed up to the party and she was like, Ralph, Ralph, go ahead and get the invoice, okay? You brought up the invoice twice on camera. Then we know from Twitter that Sheree, prior to the party being planned, already put up $1,000, okay? Sheree agreed, I will put up $1,000 and then we can plan the party. But Drew took it upon herself to go over the $1,000 budget. I think they spent like approximately $2,500 if I'm not mistaken. Or something like that. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to do the math. But y'all y'all get what I'm trying to say. All right. So do you see where I'm going with this? Do you see where I'm going with this? Like Drew Sedora set this whole thing up. She set this whole thing up so that she could embarrass Sheree and make it seem like she's cheap and she's she who cannot pay, even though she is cheap and she cannot pay. But it was a whole scheme and a whole scandal to me. Like, please, somebody in the comments, let me know if you see where I'm coming from. Along with that, notice how they played the damn shady game. And one of the questions in the shady game was, what would, what would your clapback be if you had to plan a birthday party with a friend and split the bill, but the friend didn't want to pay? It was giving setup. That was a whole setup, y'all. And you want to know, listen, you can agree to disagree with me in the comments. I know I'm right because guess what? This is reality TV and it's all fake and it's all phony. If you don't believe that Drusador set Sheree up in that moment to embarrass her, then how do you explain her premeditating a fight with Fatum by planning out that whole doggy bone situation? Let's get real. Anyways. Moving right along, Kenya, um, you, you know, Drew Sedora tries to get Kenya and Marlo on the same page. They go back six years. It's just not going to happen tonight. Um, and then we figure out that, you know, she bought Sheree. The samples are stuck and they're not done and they're in Alaska and it's a whole hot mess. So let me know how y'all feel about everything. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to create a great day.